know what's up. Here's a hot take. Pizza doesn't need sauce to be great. Today, I'm gonna show you four ways to build pizzas without sauce that will change your perspective on what exactly makes pizza great. To get started on these white pizzas, I'm gonna need some dough. I've got four pieces of a New York style pizza dough here that I've mixed two days ago and let cold rise in my fridge for 48 hours. Before I make any pizzas, I need to let this dough warm up to room temperature. So I'll recover it with the plastic wrap and then preheat my oven to its highest setting, which for me is 550F or 290C. Inside the oven, I've got a racket about the midpoint and on top of that, I'll load my pizza steel. Since this video is a lot more about how to build pizzas and not exactly how to make pizza dough, I'll briefly show you how I got the dough to this point. Into my stand mixer, I combined 360 grams of warm water, six grams of instant yeast, 20 grams of olive oil, 20 grams of sugar, 100 grams of ripe yeasted poolish. And by the way, I'll throw instructions for that and this entire recipe in the description box below. And then 630 grams of all purpose flour and 16 grams of salt. Now I'll mix this dough with the dough hook just until the dough has come together into a cohesive mass like this. From there, I'll move it out onto the counter so that I can knead it to finish developing the gluten. This recipe is a beta version that I'm working on for a new New York style dough, and I'll be sharing a full detailed video as soon as that's ready. If you're wondering why I didn't just keep kneading this dough in my stand mixer, well, that's why. This dough is pretty strong and pretty dry, and that makes the bowl pop off the stand. After two to three minutes of kneading this dough, it should pass the old fashioned tug test. No tearing or shearing, perfect. So now I'm gonna move it into a bowl to ferment, but before I do that, I'll round it into a nice tight little ball like this. The lid goes on and I'll let it rise for 60 minutes. 60 minutes later, this dough has risen by about 75 to 100%. And from here, I'll flip it out, divide it into four equal size pieces that are about 300 grams a piece. Then I'll round them into balls. From there, I'll put them onto a sheet tray sprayed with pan spray or spread with olive oil. Then I'll wrap them up with plastic wrap and throw them into the fridge to cold ferment for at least 24 hours, but preferably 48. Two days later, in about one hour before my pizza party, I'll pull this pizza out of the fridge and then preheat my oven. You already saw that though, so now we're caught up. Once this dough has risen to about room temperature or maybe 60 minutes later, it's time to build the first one. This first pizza is the most basic and in a way it's the most beautiful. This is the New York style white pizza and I think it serves as a great introduction to sauceless pizza. The first step is to stretch out my dough, but I won't go into specifics on exactly how to do that. Instead, I'll link below to my other pizza videos where I go into a lot more detail. Once this dough is stretched into a roughly 12 inch round like this, I'll hit my pizza loading peel with some semolina flour and then I'll lay down my dough. The base of this pizza and the base of all four of the pizzas in this video is gonna be full fat shredded mozzarella. For this New York style white pizza, I'm putting down about a full cup or about 120 grams. There's a lot of debate over the ideal fat content of pizza cheese. I say go with whatever is accessible to you. If that's part skim, then so be it. If you're not seeing full fat mozzarella at your grocery store though and you want it, I would say check the deli counter because they usually have a few bricks of it over there and you can buy it in bulk. Next, I'll lay down eight to 10 one inch size pieces of fresh mozzarella cheese. Any bigger than this and the cheese wouldn't melt properly and any smaller, it would get overcooked and dry. Behind the fresh mozz, I'll add a nice size sprinkling of dried oregano, then a bunch of black pepper, and then the third and final style of cheese, that's grated Parmigiano Reggiano. I always like to go for 24 month age Parmesan when I can get it because there's only like three ingredients on this pizza and using nice parm really brings this to a special place. I'll add about 50 grams of that. Then a strong pinch of flaky salt to season the whole thing up. Then I'll give the pizza a shimmy to make sure that it's not stuck to my peel. And then I'll load it into my very hot 550F 290C oven to bake for five to six minutes while I thank the sponsor of this video, Future. Future is a fitness app that pairs you with a personal trainer who sends you workouts each week, monitors your performance, and keeps you motivated. My trainer is Kyle. He's been training me for the last six months or so, and overall, I'm really happy with his approach, and he's made me a lot stronger. I mean, I won't, like, won't show you my muscles, but take my word for it, they're like, they're in there. And oh yeah, he's an accomplished powerlifter who also has a PhD in exercise physiology, so he really knows what he's doing. When I signed up for Future, we had an intro call to talk about fitness, and then Kyle made a workout plan to fit my goals and my schedule. Kyle has me doing all kinds of compound lifts and eccentric movements like this at the gym to help with my overall fitness and to improve my rock climbing. But your future trainer can develop a plan based on whatever equipment you do or do not have access to. I usually 
run my workouts off of the Future app on my watch so that Kyle can monitor my progress and my heart rate while I absolutely throw weight around the gym. But if you don't have one, Future will actually send you one to borrow for your entire membership. So to get a workout plan that's built for you and keeps you motivated, go to tryfuture.co slash Brian Lagerstrom to try your first month for $19, which by the way is a lot cheaper than most gym memberships. Again, that's $19 to try Future for your first month. The link is in my description. Thank you, Future. For this style of pizza, I like to use the fresh mozzarella on top as my main measuring stick for doneness. As you can see, those little pockets of white are just about fully melted, but they're not quite all the way there. That's perfect. Now I'm gonna pull this pizza out of the oven so that we can take a closer look. Check out that very middle of the fresh mozzarella. It's like molten. It's barely melted and in those spots it's gonna be juicy, soft, and creamy. And that's what this pizza is all about. But there's one more step. I'm gonna to top this pizza with another generous handful or two of that nice grated Parmesan cheese. Now we've got two layers of Parmesan flavor here, one cooked and one not. The fresh uncooked Parmesan on top is gonna to kind of meld with the rest of the cheeses here and make this pizza that much more savory and delicious. The crust looks pretty dope too. Let's cut into it. When I pick up the first slice, you can see explicitly why this pizza is so sick. Ooh. I agree with Lauren. This is just awesome looking. It's salty, it's creamy, it's juicy, and it's rich without being greasy. That's a really hard balance to strike. Oh my Lord, it's so moist for just being cheese. So the thing that I find special about white pizza is just how simple it is. There's just a few cheeses on here and they make something that's juicy and luxurious. It's salty and just very interesting to eat. But we can take this a step further for sure. So I'm gonna show you three more pizzas that use this kind of basic blueprint for white pizza, but they get crazier and more delicious as we go. The next pizza is gonna be a mushroom pizza and it's pretty sick. To build this mushroom pizza, I'll start back at square one by laying down a stretched out pizza dough onto some semolina flour on my pizza loading peel. Just like for the New York pizza, I'll lay down a base of shredded full fat mozzarella cheese. Again, about a cup or so or 120 grams. Then I'll top it with some mushrooms. For a pizza this size, I think about a cup's worth or 12 to 15 small pieces of mushroom per slice. I par cooked these and to get them into this state, I added a serious squizzer of olive oil into a hot pan and then added in about one pound of sliced mushrooms. These are just button mushrooms, by the way. And this pan's looking a little bit crowded, so I'll perilously scoop out some of these mushrooms, and there we go. Now a strong pinch of salt, and then a toss to combine, and from here I'll cook these mushrooms over medium heat for about six to eight minutes, or until they've released most of their moisture, and they're just starting to take on a little bit of color like this. From there, I'll scoot them over to a little baby sheet tray lined with paper towel to drain until it's pizza time. Behind the mushrooms comes some pickled red onions. This is gonna be a very, very rich pizza, and there definitely needs to be some acidity to balance all of that out. To make these, I combine 400 grams of water, 400 grams of white distilled vinegar, 80 grams of sugar, and 8 grams of salt into a small pot and brought it to a full ripping boil. From there, I added in two thinly sliced red onions and let them sit until the liquid was room temperature. By the way, I did rinse these onions under cold water to remove some of that harsh oniony edge. In a pinch, these onions can be ready in as few as, say, three hours. These ones had two days and my advice would be to just always have pickled red onions on hand forever. Okay, there are two more cheeses to add to this mushroom white pizza. The next up is a washed rind stinker of a cheese called Foxglove. This one's from Indiana here in the United States and it's an absolute beaut. But any mild bloomy rind cheese or a stinky washed rind cheese would work here. Think Telegio, Epois, Red Hawk, or even a simple brie or camembert. It stinks. Behind that washed rind cheese, I'll add seven to eight chunks of fresh mozzarella. I'll finish with a strong pinch of flaky salt. Don't skimp on the salt. Then a shimmy to make sure it's not stuck. And then I'll load this pizza in the oven to bake. Five to six minutes later, we've got a beautiful, colorful, fragrant mushroom pizza. Just like before, the fresh mozzarella has just barely melted into soft, sweet, creamy pools on top. And the other two cheeses have coalesced into a nice round backdrop for the mushrooms and onions. I have to admit though, that this pizza is lifted straight up from Union Loafer's pizza menu. I kind of helped design it though. Along with Ted Wilson, he's the owner of the place and my best friend. He did most of the heavy lifting, but uh, I did make sure it was cool to share it with all of you guys. You're cool with it, right? Dude. This pizza is gooey, it's earthy, it's funky, and just a little bit tart from the beautiful pink onions. Try this pizza soon. Up next is another pizza from that pizza joint that I just mentioned, Union Loafers. It's definitely a white pizza, but it's also green. Let me explain. 
Onto a stretched out pizza dough, I'm going to lay the base layer of shredded full fat mozzarella just like we did before. Again, that's about one cup, 120 grams. Then I'll dump an entire bunch of thinly chopped kale right on top of that. Yes, this is a lot of kale, but it's going to shrink. Stick with me. Behind that kale, I'll grab some oiled sliced garlic and then drop down 20 to 25 slices of that, including any oil that comes along for the ride. This oily garlic is a total pro level move to have on hand for the next time you're making pies at home, by the way. To make it, I sliced 15 to 20 cloves of garlic thinly like this, then covered it with olive oil and stirred it up to combine. The raw garlic flavors the oil and the oil keeps the garlic from burning while it's in the oven. On top of the garlic and oil, I'll come back with a very strong pinch of grated Parmesan cheese, like a quarter cup, and and then finally, a strong pinch of chili flakes. Now, I'll give the pizza a little shimmy to make sure that it's not stuck, and then I'll load it into the oven to bake for five to six minutes. After five to six minutes, as you can see, that kale shrunk down like a lot. It also looks a little bit parched though, and maybe a little bit dry. So here comes the real innovation of this pizza. To lube it up, I'll combine 50 grams of olive oil and 50 grams of freshly squeezed lemon juice. Give it a shake to temporarily emulsify it, and then drizzle a very liberal amount of that all over the top of the pizza maybe four to five tablespoons worth. To finish it, I'll top that with another dousing of Parmesan cheese. Like, use a lot of Parmesan because the parm soaks up that lemon oil and those two together lube up the entire roasty, garlicky pizza. Again, I can't take any of the credit for this idea. My friend Ted, who is a total pizza Jedi bad boy role model, thought of it. Or maybe he got it from another guy. Basically, it doesn't matter. This pizza is cool, and I hope you give it serious consideration the next time you're pizza partying. Okay, the last pizza up here is kind of the most deluxe, and it finally has some meat on it. I know some of you guys out there are like, hey man, where's all the meat at? It's coming right at you, bro. Okay, pizza goes down, then about a cup of shredded full fat mozzarella as usual, then on top of that, I'll drop eight to 10 little pieces of fresh mozzarella, and then pesto. A bunch of it. I guess it kind of breaks the rules on the no sauce thing, but this pesto is being used as a topper, not a base. To make this pesto, I combined 225 grams of olive oil, 100 grams of basil. Yes, I get it that that's like $12 worth of basil. Feel free to make a quarter or a half batch here instead. 25 grams of parsley behind that, no stems. 100 grams of Parmesan, 30 grams of rinsed red onion or shallot. 100 grams of toasted pine nuts or walnuts or almonds or whatever nuts you got. Then five grams of salt and 30 grams of lemon juice. Spin it up in the food processor for 15 seconds or so to break down the herbs and nuts and there we go a very non-authentic pesto but my version of perfection and great on a pizza lastly i'll top that pesto with some thinly sliced mortadella if you haven't had a lot of mortadella in your life it's one of the best tasting meats period. It originated in the bologna region of italy and it's essentially just fancy bologna maybe 10 to 12 pieces of mortadella on this pizza in total. And now I'll load this into the oven for five to six minutes to bake. And there we go, yet another banger of a white pizza. Again, I probably went a little heavy on the pesto, but it just tastes so freaking good, especially with that fatty, rich mortadella on top. When I cut into this one, you can see that it's quite juicy. Flavor-wise, it's herbal, it's bright, and so, so rich. I hope I've convinced you guys that great pizza doesn't need sauce. In fact, it really opens the door for creativity. Think of it as like a blank canvas for different topping combinations. What I love about this style of pizza in general is just its simple beauty, especially that New York style white pizza. It's just three cheeses, some oregano and black pepper, and it will totally blow your mind. I promise. Let's eat these things.